welcome back to uh, part three of this series of uh, how to kind of get yourself squared away and get on a straight line moving forward. And, and that's that's kind of what this section is, is about, building yourself into being a, a good person. And this is maybe more important than any of the other parts. You've got to think about yourself as a a resource. You are some capital. You are the, a machine. You are a human resource that is responsible for making you happy, responsible for making you wealthy, responsible for achieving all of your goals. You get to build you into being whatever you want you to be based on what's important to you. And if what's important to you is smoking a lot of weed and getting laid, then okay, go build yourself into the kind of person who gets to do that a bunch. And if that brings you happiness, more power to you. Yeehaw, go have fun. If, on the other hand, you have an interest in building a net worth so that you can retire, so that you can uh, maybe go on some great vacations before you retire, so you can have some toys, so you can uh, do that kind of stuff. Or maybe it isn't even the end that you're working for. Maybe it's the, the means. Maybe you want to be a productive human being, a valuable human being. And that's kind of what I'm what I'm going to suggest you do is be proud of yourself, not just because you exist. Don't just give yourself a trophy for existing. Make yourself into the person that you want to be proud of or that you will be proud of. Well, what kind of person is that? I would say honesty is a huge thing. And this is complete honesty. Uh, here's an area where I was dishonest. Back when I was in college, I would go, and several of the other students would do it too, we would go to Walmart at the beginning of the semester and we would buy a uh, boom box. Those were big back in the early 90s. We'd buy the boom box and then go use it. And then before the 90 day return policy thing expired, we would take it back because it wasn't working well and we would exchange it for another one. And then in another 90 days, we would have to go in and just get our money back on it because we would say it wasn't working either. Well, that's dishonest. That's not the kind of person that I'm, I'm not proud now to say that I did that scam. Well, yeah, but Kmart or Walmart or whatever, they can afford it. They're rich. No, that has nothing to do with it. It doesn't matter how much money the Walton family or the stockholders, it doesn't matter how much money they have. That was not an honest above board thing to do. That wasn't the purpose of their generous return policy. They legitimately want to take care of things that there are real problems with. And people like us who found loopholes, shame on me for doing that. That was wrong. Don't be that person. Even if nobody's looking, even if you're never going to get caught, do what's right. If there's another person who has chosen to elevate themselves above the state of nature, uh, and by the way, if you haven't listened to that half an hour uh, description of anti-subjectivism, that's kind of the philosophy I adhere to, uh, I would check that out in written or audible uh, form. It's free online. Anti-subjectivism manifesto. Uh, go read that or listen to it. So be this valuable, honest person who is honest and valuable for the sake of being honest and valuable. Think about what what you produce each day. Have you produced value? Uh, and when I say value, not necessarily something that you value. Have you produced something that other people value that day? Well, one thing you could produce would be a smile and a wave at a person who lets you in in traffic, lets you cut in front of them. Um, th that is producing value. They're going to feel great about themselves for having done a favor and for receiving uh, this this appreciation from you. Uh, building a widget is producing value. Uh, teaching somebody how to do something, making somebody's day, uh, starting a business that helps people get something is a great thing to do. Working for someone else who's producing something of value, that's, that's producing value. Uh, be a value producer. Don't take up more energy or value than you produce. And this would be the stereotypical person on uh, welfare or a politician or something like that. It costs more 
to keep that lump of flesh around than what they're putting back into the world. And don't be that person. Just choose not to be that person. Choose to be honorable. Choose to be a producer. Uh, and then it's up to you what you produce. And, and if you want ideas, uh, go into AI or, or Google or, or DuckDuckGo and just, you know, I don't know, type in something like 100 side hustle business ideas or uh, 100 unmet needs or I don't know, just try messing around like that. And something might dawn on you that you're like, oh my gosh, I never thought of doing that little service business thing or reselling silver coins or whatever. Uh, there's going to be some idea that you just go, holy cow, I can't believe I never thought of that. Uh, that's awesome. I'm going to do that. So be thinking of any way that you can to produce value. This will start providing you with a good reputation. If you're honest and you're working hard, gosh, that is that is so much. But like, I feel like we could just stop right now and not even get into all the other things. Um, that is such a huge share of, of what an important, valuable human being is. And think about the people who you respected growing up or your neighbors now. Uh, what makes you respect them? If the person really works long, hard hours and they're honest, geez, who really cares about other stuff? But let's talk about that other stuff too. How about being friendly? How about being nice? Uh, this is so big. Always have a big smile on your face. Train your face to have a smile on it. That's just who you are, is a welcoming, smiling person. And you don't smile with your mouth. You smile with your eyes. You kind of, with the corner, outside corners of your eyes, that is what you're thinking of when you're smiling. And when you look at somebody else in the face, in the eye, and you smile like that, that is just a, the most welcoming, uh, defense-breaking thing ever. And this is going to bring you friendships, lovers, uh, business opportunities, get you out of uh, government theft uh, tickets, that kind of thing. Um, it's just going to be good in so many ways in your life. There's, there aren't many downsides to changing your resting face into a smiling, cheerful face. That's you, just smiling, happy. As you look the other person in the eyes, you're, you're saying something positive like, I, I can't wait to get to know you better. I bet you're a wonderful human being. You're not saying that out loud, but that's what you're thinking. And it is going to transfer over. I, I, I promised you it's worth doing this. So being friendly and cheerful, that's big. Uh, grammar. People are going to put you into a particular cast in life. And so, yeah, maybe I shouldn't say that the subject is grammar. Maybe it is is choosing the cast, C-A-S-T-E, that you want to be in. And I guess in India, there are four different casts, main casts. In the United States, I don't know how many there are. It's informal. Uh, evidently, they don't exist, according to some people, but they, they really do. And if you go to a, a golf course, and not the city golf course, but the one that you can't get into uh, unless you have a bunch of money, the one that's a private golf course with the big, huge gates in the front and the gazillion dollar homes in it. If you go to that golf course and have lunch and listen to what other people are saying and, and what, how they're dressed and the words they use, it's a completely different uh, type of person than if you go to the nearby trailer park or barrio or ghetto or whatever and listen to those people talking and look how they're dressed, etc. You get to choose who you're going to be for the rest of your life. It can't hurt to take good care of your teeth. You don't see many Fortune 500 CEOs or advertising executives or small business owners who are wildly successful who have bad teeth. Most people take care of their teeth who are in the upper castes. Well, do that. Like, that's a simple, easy one. If you already have bad teeth, well, take as good a care of them as you can now. And as soon as you can afford it, Go to an orthodontist and get them straightened out and get them bleached white or whatever you need to do. Uh, but that's how people will absolutely judge you. And if you're going to do business with people in the upper echelons of society, um, the higher castes, then you absolutely must 
be appealing to them in appearance and uh, not only visual appearance, but audible appearance and olfactory appearance and uh, all this. Uh, and now if you're not planning to do that, uh, then maybe it's not as important. If you're just really happy to start up a propane delivery business that you're going to do for the rest of your life and you never really want anything from the anybody else, you don't want to develop any partnerships that benefit both of you beyond just delivering propane to them, then I guess you don't have to do this. But I would say keep your options open. Uh, another thing is is the grammar. Uh, pay attention to your grammar. Ask some friends who are grammar Nazi police kind of people to uh, uh, tell you what you're doing wrong. You know, maybe send them a one minute long message uh, telling them, uh, I don't know, telling a story and then have them tell you the four biggest mistakes you made in it and then really pay attention to that in, in real life. I live in the Rocky Mountain area and there are a lot of people here, college graduates, who use the word seen where they should be using the word saw. And for someone like me who pays attention to grammar, when I hear somebody say, yeah, I seen him standing right over there, they just automatically pigeonholes that person into a lower caste. I would never hire that person to be a manager or even a, any client facing position. I just, I wouldn't do it. They're, they're not, they don't know how to speak. Um, and that would cut them out immediately. So even if you don't want to get hired by some grammar Nazi like me, um, keep your options open. Learn to speak well. Uh, listen to the books, uh, audible books by Robert Ardrey. Uh, Territorial Imperative is one of them. Out of Africa, I think, is one. The Social Contract is another. I think there's one other in his four-volume set. Uh, and just the way he writes is so beautiful. Mimic him as much as you can. Uh, read some poetry. Uh, read scientific journals or or like philosophy stuff, academic level stuff uh, that will really help you develop a, a, a good vocabulary and good grammar. Then if you want to start making mistakes, you're allowed to start making mistakes, accidental or purposeful, once you have mastered everything. And an example of that is I often use the word stuff or things when there could be a better, more professional descriptive word. However, I do it purposefully to be, um, I don't know, more down to earth, aw shucksy, because that's the current image that I want to project to the world. Uh, so I'm purposefully doing that. Go to Toastmasters. This will help a ton. Get your, I think it's 12 uh, lessons or whatever until you reach level one. I did the 12 and I did more. I don't think I ever took the test, but uh, it was very beneficial. Things like um, uh, counting uh, your ums and ahs. How many times uh, are you um, pausing and using those filler words? Well, stop it. Just pause. No need to use filler words. Uh, there are a lot of other little tricks like that that you'll learn in Toastmasters that are well worth your time. Uh, customer service. A big part of customer service, and you're going to be in customer service no matter what you do. And maybe I shouldn't say customer service. Maybe I should say dealing with other folk. Um, but you're going to be dealing with bosses, employees, regulators, uh, clients, customers, vendors, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to be dealing with a lot of people as you go out and create your awesome, wealthy life. And as you're doing so, make sure that what is you know, traditionally known as customer service, make sure that it's good. Uh, a big part of this is uh, communicating with people what they can expect, timelines. Make sure you always under-promise and over-deliver. If you think it's going to take you three days to do something, tell them that you are pretty sure you can have it done within a week. And you're you know, 95% sure you'll have it done within a week, definitely done within two weeks. And then bust it, get it done really well in three or four days, 
and they will be absolutely thrilled. If something horrible happens to you, you get in a car wreck and you're in the hospital for two days, you can still fulfill your promise and have it done within a week. So under promise over deliver and give people that expectation. An example right now is I took my uh, one of my vehicles into the mechanic and gave me a what I think to be a ridiculous quote, something like $1,200 for one little door latch. And I think that that doesn't make sense. And so I said, well, you try to get a used one from a uh, junkyard or something. And he said, yeah, he'll, he'll check into that. Well, now it's been two weeks and we have plenty of other vehicles that we're using. So it's not a, not a huge hassle, but it would have been good to know what his projected timeline was so that I can base my life around that. Uh, and he didn't tell me that. And he's not communicating in the way that I want to communicate. I am the customer, so I should get to choose if I want to communicate by phone call, email, or text message. That's kind of, those are the popular ways of communicating in 2023. And if you have a customer that says, oh, I prefer Twitter, well, get a Twitter account. That's your customer. Have good customer service. If it's your boss that says, oh, instead of me sending stuff to you by text message, can I just send it by Instagram? Absolutely. Get an Instagram account and do that for them. Uh, let the customer dictate how they're how they are communicated with, what medium is used. Uh, so that's customer service. Always smiling. We always talk, we already talked about this. Always be smiling. Um, that will get you out of so many things. You can say some incorrect things, but if you're smiling with your eyes and genuinely showing interest in a person, you can make some pretty big mistakes and come back from them because you're so likable. Uh, and, and it's a good safety net because you will make some mistakes. You will say some wrong things. You'll have to apologize, uh, but always keep that big smile and friendly demeanor on, and that will help a ton. Um, speaking of apologizing sometimes, try to build your life so that you don't have to apologize. I don't like apologizing, so I under-promise and over-deliver, and it turns out that I don't have to apologize much. Uh, I don't look at the ends. I look at the means in terms of how I treat people. And I'm always nice to people. If I'm driving somewhere and I don't have a, a strict appointment, if a car is broken down, I'm pulling over to help them. That's just kind of my personal policy in life. It's just, it's what I do. Um, that's who I am. I am that helpful, nice person. And nobody's writing all this stuff down. And it's not going to, in any trackable way, help me get a job or land a new client or make more money or whatever. But I'm not doing it for that end goal. I'm doing it for the, the means of it. And it is really surprising to me how frequently someone will approach me and say something like, hey, Shepard. And I'm like, hey, and I don't remember their name. And they say, remember me? I'm Bob and I'm, I'm the guy you helped with blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, how are you doing, Bob? And I probably didn't even know their name back then, but I made a big impact in their life. And now they think well of me. Uh, and so I, I kind of like to think about my life. And I wish I had thought of this at age 15 or 20. But I, I now like to kind of look at how I live my life as though I want a bunch of people to be disappointed when I die. Like, wouldn't it be neat? I don't plan to have a funeral, or at least not not one that I'll attend alive. But when I die, I don't really care if it's a funeral or a service or whatever. But it would be neat if there were a thousand or two thousand people who would say, oh, yeah, I remember that guy. Uh, I was at the grocery store and had forgotten my wallet and he handed me 10 bucks and I didn't have to run out to my car. Uh, and he, he just handed me this card that said, donate to this, um, this special cause. And he trusted me to do that. Nobody ever trusts me. And that, that was a confidence builder. You know, little things like that, that we don't know the impact that we're having in other people's lives. Be awesome to other human beings. Treat them as well as they deserve to be treated. And even give people a little credit. If you meet a stranger, you don't know if you should uh, treat them with respect yet because they haven't done anything to earn respect. Give them a little bit of respect on credit. See if they live up to it. And if they don't, move on. Ignore them. Uh, oops, but keep your same policy up of extending some respect on credit into the future. Uh, those are some ideas on customer service. Uh, do what you say, 
uh, say what you're going to do and do what you say. There are all these old adages. Follow those and you are going to do so well in five or ten years of doing this in a concentrated way of just purposefully building yourself into being this awesome person. You will be an awesome person. And the people around you will know you as being an awesome person. You'll have that reputation. Ask some folks to write you letters of uh, recommendation just to whom it may concern. Uh, just reach out to somebody. After you've been living in a uh, in the old lady's room for four years, uh, just say, hey, uh, ma'am, will you do me a favor? And I, I hope that I've lived as you expected here. And I, I guess since I'm still here four years later and I'm choosing to leave, I, I think I did. Uh, would you be willing to write a letter of recommendation for me for the future? Not necessarily for rental things, but just so that other people kind of know what to expect, what kind of human being I am. I'll bet you this little old man, little old lady would be more than happy to do that. Do that with your bosses, with your vendors, and kind of start developing this portfolio of people saying, hey, this this guy, this gal is awesome. They are honest. They they tell me what they're going to do, and then they actually do it. And they do it smiling, and they do it quickly, and they do it well. They do, they're just an excellent human being. Now, uh, the good news is that most people suck. And so you don't have to do very much or do a very good job to be really close to the top of the heap. If, if you incorporate with some discipline and uh, put some energy into it, 10% of what this podcast has chatted about, that will put you in the top 10% of human beings. Can you believe that? Now, if you do 100% of what I recommend, plus another five even better ideas that you come up with on your own or read about elsewhere, if you do those, you'll be in the top 1%. And I have dealt with a lot of very, I don't know, high-end, high-cast kind of people and their workers. I'm thinking of one person in particular. He's a, a concierge service for billionaires and he kind of manages their certain aspects of their life and this guy absolutely sucks he's not friendly he talks about himself he doesn't ask me about me and what I'm interested in he never follows through with his uh, promises and, oh I'm sorry uh, yeah I, oh, I've been meaning to do that I'm so sorry we've just been and then he blathers for five minutes about how busy he's been basically using me who have already been victimized by him not paying me well and being a crappy customer service kind of guy. Now he's further victimizing me. Yeah, I don't want to be a victim, dude. But anyway, he's victimizing me by making me be his therapist uh, and sit there listening to him. Don't be that person. And, and, and this person is at the top of their game in New York City for working for billionaires. And he absolutely sucks. That's your competition. Now, having said that, there are some really good people out there at all levels um, but you can you can do this. You can easily be in the top one or at least five percent of human beings in terms of reputation. What yeah, what people think of you. Uh, it's huge. It's huge, huge, huge. Do it. <laughs>